Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today we're going to be talking all about Daphnia. First, Tortoise Fan requested an update on my Daphnia culture, so we'll be doing that. And then I'll be giving you 10 troubleshooting tips for a Daphnia culture. As you can see here, the Daphnia are doing really well. We have a big cloud of them up here at the surface of the aquarium. Many of them are fairly small, having been born in the last few days indicates that the population is growing. The scuds are also doing well. You can see a few of them here on the glass and a few of them zipping around the tank. Most of them tend to congregate on the bottom of the aquarium. It's a little bit difficult to see all of them because many of them are behind that layer of algae. They're just kind of obscured there, but you can kind of see them a little bit through that patina of algae. If I move over here into the corner, you can see that a large number of scuds tends to congregate in the corners of the aquarium for whatever reason, which makes it really easy to harvest them with a turkey baster. Now, as this culture has matured, a few things have changed. One of them is the algae that I mentioned, and that's great that it's growing there because the scuds feed on it, as do the cap snails. I don't know if you can see any of the cap snails right now. I can see a few on the glass. They're pretty small. They might be hard to distinguish from scuds on your screen. But one is because the scuds eat it, and another is because it does help to reduce nitrogenous waste in the water. So it helps maintain good water quality. I do have to do water changes. I try to change about three gallons out of this 20 gallon tank um, every week. That seems to be just about right. Although honestly, I'm trying to figure out a balance between scud population and Daphnia population. One thing is that the scuds are such messy eaters that whatever food I throw in there, they kind of pulverize it and the uh, fine particles are small enough for the Daphnian to in ingest. So usually if I'm just adding little bits of vegetables or um, fish food pellets or things like that to this culture, I don't have to feed the Daphnia separately very much because the scuds are doing it for me. I think that's interesting and uh, it's also pretty convenient. I don't have to worry about directly feeding the Daphnia as often. But the large population of scuds did something interesting and rather disturbing. There was a breeding population of ram's horn snails in here, and the scuds ate them. So uh, I haven't put any more in. I'm afraid they'll get eaten if I do put them back in. I would like to have some snails in here uh, for several reasons, but I'm concerned that if I put them back in, they will get eaten again by the scuds. The scuds are incredibly ravenous and it's such a high population. What I may have to do is simply harvest the scuds more aggressively, which uh, I'm sure my multis won't mind. And now here are 10 tips to troubleshoot a Daphnia culture. Number one, before you even get the Daphnia, consider pre-cycling the tank. One good way to do this is to set up the tank and then put in a few ram's horn snails or bladder snails, something like that. And after you've kept and fed those snails and they've begun to reproduce for a couple of months, it should be ready for Daphnia. It's not entirely necessary to pre-cycle a Daphnia tank, but it can be very helpful. Number two, don't put any live plants in the tank. I know a few people have had success with this, but in general, Daphnia in the long term, for whatever reason, don't seem to thrive with live plants. Number three, don't allow filamentous or thread-like algae species to grow. It's okay if algae grows on the glass in a film. It's okay if there's suspended algae in the water column, because the Daphnia will eat that. But thread-like algae traps the Daphnia, and it tends to kill the ones that get trapped. And number four, an air supply, or, or using an air hose to add uh, a little bit of water movement, and aeration to the tank is beneficial, but please don't use an air stone because an air stone causes very fine bubbles and those fine bubbles can get trapped in the Daphnia's carapace and then it will cause it to float to the surface where it'll die. So just use an air line and add a trickle of bubbles. Number five, it's a really good idea to drip acclimate Daphnia upon arrival. Hopefully you got them in a breather bag uh, because if you didn't, then drip acclimation is not ideal. But if you did receive them in a breather bag, drip acclimation is a really, really good idea to help them um, transition between 
the original water that they were in and your water. And number six is start with a fairly small number of Daphnia, especially if your tank's not cycled. It's really easy to get Daphnia to reproduce. So if you start out with you know, only a couple of hundred Daphnia in a 20 gallon tank, uh, you're not going to have to worry about them overwhelming the bacterial colonies or you know filling the tank with too much waste and killing themselves but if you start out with several thousand Daphnia in a 20 gallon tank something that you can work up to it's going to be a little harder to get them to uh, survive the process number seven is feed lightly it's always better to underfeed than to overfeed Daphnia and uh, people talk about feeding them when you notice the water should be uh, slightly cloudy with the food and that's great but it's better to allow it to clear uh, occasionally and then you know feed again rather than trying to keep it perpetually milky that can be a problem Daphne when they're overfed uh, can actually suffocate because the food can clog their the leg like structures that are both uh, a filter for feeding but also what they use to breathe so you don't want to overfeed Daphne Number eight, you should use an appropriate source of water. And in many cases, Daphne do not do well unless they are in aged water. Uh, I have a strain that does not need aged water. I use recently dechlorinated tap water to do water changes and they are fine. But most strains need a source of aged water and tank water is great as long as you are sure that your water is free of hydra because introducing even one hydra into a Daphnia culture, of course, will be an eventual disaster as the hydra will eat Daphnia and reproduce asexually and uh, cause a lot of problems for your culture. I would recommend against using distilled or RO water unless you remineralize it because uh, Daphnia needs some mineral content, some calcium and other minerals for their exoskeletons. Number nine, weekly partial water changes are beneficial to the culture. They do tend to stimulate reproduction quite a bit. I generally aim to change 15% weekly. I don't always get there, but that is the goal, and I generally do that, and it seems to keep them uh, doing really well. And 10, the final tip for troubleshooting a Daphne culture is once the population seems to stabilize, harvest from the culture regularly. That can really be beneficial. It tends to stimulate the reproduction and keeps the culture healthy. So that's about it for the video today. Thank you for watching. I release videos every Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. If you would like this video, please rate it, please share it, please comment, and uh, you should also subscribe. Yeah, that.